They do such a wonderful job <clears throat> back there. All right. It's amazing how much they're taken for granted. And then if it doesn't work, how much you appreciate them when it does. Such practical counsel given in Romans chapter 12. We're considering matters, heart matters, and we've looked at uh, in this the first message in this series, we've looked at the fact that we need to guard well our hearts and fill our hearts with Christ. We looked at the second message was developing an attitude of gratitude. I love this season of year because it's Thanksgiving season followed by Christmas, which turns our thoughts uh, and hearts towards Christ. This morning, I've titled this third message, Expressions, Heart Matters, Expressions. It's an amazing thing. Our lives and our hearts are much like sponges. That which we absorb, you fill a sponge with liquid, you squeeze that sponge, out comes the liquid that was filled, that it was filled with, right? Have you ever had one of those days when you thought, oh, at the end of the day, ooh, it wasn't a good day. I should have said this differently. I should have done that differently. Perhaps instead of retaliating, I should have been kind. Perhaps I could have done this. I'd like to suggest to you today that there is no escaping that you will express that which is in your heart at some point. You will express that which is in your heart. It's unavoidable. It's a law of human nature. So fill your heart with goodness. Fill your heart with the things of God that out of the well of the heart will pour forth the things that will build you up, that will build others up. So we're going to touch on Romans chapter 12. And because my voice today is probably like a car battery, when it's worn down, eventually you turn the key and you hear click, click, and then it's done. I'm going to do this in summary outline form, okay? Don't be disappointed. There's a fellowship lunch coming. Service. It's so vitally important if we're going to grow in our Lord Jesus Christ. Expressions of the heart flow out of hearts in life that are connected with Christ. And if you want to mature in life, and if you want to have those things flow out of your life, one of the things that must flow out of a Christian's life is service service to others. I found it interesting this past week how much our congregation has um, has interfaced with other people during this past week. We started on Sunday interfacing with the church that uh, shares our church facilities as they were laying block alongside of us in this water runoff. And it was quite enjoyable. Uh, I realized that 20-pound blocks, when I was 20 years old, they felt like 10 pounds. They now feel like 30 pounds. And what I used to do in three hours, or what I used to do in an hour, takes me three hours today. And I was just very thankful for those young, strapping 30 to 40-year-olds, six or eight of them, that were right alongside of us laying those blocks. I appreciated Paul's service. You don't know this, but I'm not going to call it, call everybody out because I'll forget, I'll forget somebody. But Paul, during the past many, many months, has gone on Craigslist to find these blocks that are lining the channel down there. And he'd find them on sale and he'd take his truck out. And when I found this out at the end of the day, I thought, oh, I don't have any aches and pains at all. He has brought about five or six loads, pickup loads, of five to six hundred in each pickup load, manually loaded them by himself, and unloaded them by himself. 
So, Paul, for the 40 or 50 that I put in, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> He'll show you his guns later. He's feeling real beefy. <laughs> Service is good. God brings in, uh, I'm not wandering all around, I'm setting a little context here. God brings into our lives strangers sometimes that do service alongside of us in some unusual ways. We come alongside strangers who are strangers to us to do service for them. I think a family promise. It's, it's an interesting ballet that goes on. It starts at O Dark Hundred in preparing breakfast. And then they go off during the day and come back at night. And somehow all the rooms are miraculously set up. And we host people that are in transition. I think of our pathfinders. There are so many good things going on in our church. This is really a church that has been blessed. Can you say amen? But let me take it even from a corporate blessing. As you reflect, during this Thanksgiving time of year, can you say that you have been blessed in spite of the difficulties, in spite of the perplexities, in spite of what you might be facing on the near horizon or the distant horizon, that God has blessed you? Romans chapter 12 says that if we're going to be healthy as Christians, and if we're going to have strong hearts, that which is in our heart must be modeled after the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. And his life was all about serving others. He left the courts of heaven, came down to redeem mankind. And his life was a continual life of service. I'd invite you to open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. We'll just touch, by summary fashion, on a few elements of Christian service today. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That is just the opening introductory premise. That which is reasonable service. Present yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a living sacrifice. Everything you say, everything you do, every action, uh, every action of your life is giving testimony to those around you. Have you ever noticed how children observe? It's almost scary sometimes. You come home one day and they're, they're uh, saying some things that kind of startle you and you ask them, where did you learn that? Well, from you, Daddy, from you, Mommy. Now, they will observe those things, but they will also observe the things in your life as you're praying for them, as you're lifting them up in prayer, as you're modeling what the Christian life is all about. Paul says, present yourself before God a sacrifice, a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. It's not unreasonable for God to expect service from us, is it? It's a, va a basic premise. You are going to serve somebody. You are going to serve yourself. You are going to serve powers of darkness. You're going to serve powers of light. So you will serve whom you will choose to serve. So service is not an option, but it is a mandated uh, requirement of life, and you will serve one power or the other. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. <clears throat> it says, not, uh, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The Greek word here for serving is diakona, which we get deaconess or deacons, and its connotation is a life of service so that day by day we are growing in our service to our Lord Jesus Christ. So what does it mean? In Romans chapter 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you prove that which is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. If you want to change, 
If you want to change from where you are now in your Christian walk and have a closer walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, it says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. The Greek word there is metamorphos. It's the English word that we get uh, uh, a caterpillar is uh, metamorphs from being a caterpillar into a butterfly. When the Spirit of God comes into our hearts and into our lives, those hearts which are filled in lives that are filled with selfish ideas, I want to be the best at what I do. I want to be number one. I want to have the largest house. I want to have the fastest car. I want to be better than anyone. I want to be more respected. Now, nobody here probably is that egregious in their public proclamations, but it comes into our lives so subtly. It's good to want to be uh, effective. It's good to want to be good at what you do. But this is talking about a spirit of transformation in the heart that changes, not following the will and wishes that we have for ourselves, but following the will and wishes that Christ has for us. Open your Bibles to <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 12. The foundation, uh, the foundation of service is um, found in Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in, what does your Bible say? Instant in prayer. Being instant in prayer is a matter that will out of your heart. Being in communion with the Holy Spirit, it will, a flow, it will allow to flow out of your heart a prayerful way of treating others and embracing those who are different than you are, welcoming their ideas and building relationship with strangers in way that you can interact with them to share the gospel with them. A heart that spends time with God is a heart that will be changed. I don't know how it is in your life, friends. Sometimes I get so busy that uh, sometimes life presses in that I just say, okay, God, you know, through this day, you just take over. You know, just, just work in ways that I don't even anticipate or realize yet. It happened Wednesday morning in a very unique way. I got a phone call uh, from my brother, and he said, I need to talk to you. Uh, my mother has multiple myeloma, as some of you may know, and she needs to go on a new medicine. And my brother said, she doesn't want to take the medicine. And I said, what seems to be the case? Now, I'm used to dealing with some very serious things. Now, there are serious things, and there are very serious things, and are, there are extremely serious things. And for me, the highest of those things that I deal with are the things that I deal with my mother, okay? Serious things are down here, really serious things. You start talking about my mother, and I get real concerned and real focused. It's a real serious conversation. You don't want to be around me when things don't go well in those conversations. So I said, well, tell me what's wrong. He said, she doesn't want to take her medicine. I said, well, that probably isn't too serious. A couple of conversations with her and she'll be taking them. He said, the medicine they want to put her on cost $15,600 per month. And I said, now that's serious. And I'm really busy this morning. I said, okay, this one is something God's going to need to take care of. I can take care of quite a bit of stuff, you know, navigate a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but $15,600 would cause me to go to the bank and have a conversation with a loan officer. And it probably would take care of many of my credit cards to the limits, etc. So I puzzled a little bit, and I picked up the phone, and I said, well, let me make a couple of calls. So I called the doctor's office, and they put me through to this person that navigates this kind of situation, and I got his voicemail. Wrong thing for me to get. Call, leave a message, left a message. Waited two hours, call, leave a message. That was six hours into this and it needed to be fixed. 
So I picked, before I picked up the phone, I just said, okay, God, help me represent you in this. Not what I want to give them, a piece of my mind, which I can't afford to lose right now. I picked up the phone and I got a hold of the nurse, lovely lady. And she said, you know, we can work this through. And I said, tell me what this pathway looks like. She applies for a grant, and in two weeks, or a week or two, she'll find out if she'll get the grant. And then there's a pathway of actually getting the medicine. I said, well, I don't quite understand how that's beneficial to a patient that supposedly needs the medicine today. Not a week or two. Well, have you talked to someone? Yes, I had a lovely conversation with his voicemail twice. Well, I'll see if I can put it put you through to him, which I actually got a human voice. Very nice gentleman, total stranger to me. Isn't that way God works sometimes in your life? You're interfacing with somebody you don't know for the first time, and it's really important. Some things are really important. So I said to myself, take a deep breath now and be very, very nice. So I said, okay, Lord, just breathe in, breathe out. Nice man. Very nice man. Shane, thank you very much. I talked with him on the phone for about 15 minutes. He said, all we need is is her monthly income. I said, that won't be hard. I can give it to you. It's not a lot. I sent him an email, and I got an email back the next morning. And uh, I said, she earns about eight to $900 a month. And that's going to buy about a quarter of a tablet and she needs 27 and three quarters more. He said, she qualifies, and this is the way God surprises you sometimes. In the email was a response, she qualifies for a $10,000 grant from the manufacturer. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then I said to myself, now is that a grant towards the monthly fee, or is that a grant towards her deductible? So I sent him another email. Does that apply towards her contribution or just towards the 15000 leaving a large piece to come? And he wrote back, it's towards her deductible. And so I said, thank you, Lord. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. Even if the answer had come back, no. Just knowing that he's leading when things are difficult. It's not because... It was a positive answer. It was just knowing that he was going to be going through that pathway in front of me. Does that make sense, friends? So serving, serving those who are close to us, serving total strangers at times in emulating what it means to be a Christian. Open your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 and 10. In that service, that service must be filled uh, with the love of Christ. Verse 9 says, let love, be de- let, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, what? Preferring one another. How many times are there disputes in families? How many times between siblings are there disagreements? And oftentimes it stems that I am right and you are wrong. Instead of I understood it this way, tell me how did you understand it? And at times when you listen, it's easy to understand the other person. And at times it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Maybe your way is the better way. But even beyond that, the scripture says, preferring one another rather than preferring your own way. I wonder how things would be in a world if we would emulate this to those we come in contact with. The third one is hope. Hope must pour forth from our hearts in service. Heart matters and service flowing out of the Christian life must result in hope. Verse 12 of Romans 12, it says, 
rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in instant what? Prayer. Hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing in instant prayer. Rejoicing in hope. You've been around those people, haven't you? You've been around those people who just eviscerate hope. It just bubbles out from inside of them. They leave you better than the way they found you. Patient in the most difficult situations. I like people like that. And sometimes I, it just, it is, it's just refreshing to see people deal with difficult situations. And they just sit there patiently and listen and listen and listen. And then you ask them, well, do you, can you tell me what you're thinking or how you're feeling? And they talk to you about hope. And they talk to you about a way out of this. And they pray that God will be with you. And the heart is gently transformed as Christ's Holy Spirit comes into that situation. Have you been there? Have you been in those situations? It's an amazing, wonderful thing to experience service of others and have our hearts drawn closer to the, our Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 12, verse 13, there is an aspect of service that is a tangible one, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to what? Given to what? Hospitality. I like hospitality. I'm not, <clears throat> well, this isn't totally 100% accurate. I'm not real good at the hospitality that I like. Let me explain. Let me try that differently. I enjoy people's hospitality. I like to be hospitable. But when there's a lunch provided, somebody has to bring the appetite. Somebody has to bring the food. I don't cook very well, so I try the other, other part of that. That's a long way to say we have a fellowship lunch. We'd like you to be our guests. Hospitable. In all ways, somebody needs something, making yourself available. Somebody needs some help, helping them to the best of your ability. Hospitable people that will go out of their way, not walk around, not treat you like uh, you're just one in a crowd, but seek you out to have a relationship with you. Verse 14 says, blessing those that you come in contact with is part of serving. Blessing them which persecute you, bless and curse them not. So that out of our hearts and lives in service for Christ, that we, our hearts are blessing others. It's so easy to have the other attitude of criticalness, of pointing out another person's fault, of explaining your viewpoint. But can you imagine how the world would be different that if every, 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 now which... What am I trying to stress here? Every, every situation, you entered into it intentionally to bless somebody. That before you close that transaction and that situation, you would find words of hope and words of blessing with the realization that what you are doing is ministering on Christ's behalf to that person. They are uniquely gifted, uniquely created. They were brought into your life to make you a better person, and you were brought into that situation to bless them on behalf of Christ. Serving Christ in being a blessing to others. And that service results uh, in rejoicing. In verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice. And the last half is also not only the rejoicing, but come alongside and weep with them that what? Weep. There's a time for rejoicing and there's a time for coming alongside of others that when there's been traumatic events in their lives and their hearts are broken and there's really nothing you can say, you just cry with them and just be there with them because you can't fix it, but you can, you can be there with them during that time. Weep with them. Give them a hug. Draw close to them. And 17 says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And the challenge of Romans chapter 12, If possible, 
as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. So, heart matters today, friends. Heart matters today. If you want to have a healthy, strong Christian heart, it must be a heart that's active in service for our Lord Jesus Christ. A cup filled with water that is never emptied or refilled becomes stagnant. A heart filled with good thoughts will just become stagnant. When Christ pours blessings into your life, let them flow forth from within you. And then the world will see what it's all about to be a Christian and hearts that are transformed after the likeness of Christ. May we go in service during this Thanksgiving season to serve our Lord Jesus Christ, filling our lives with thanksgiving for what he has done for us with expressions of hope, with expressions of joy and gratitude to those that we come in contact with, that he might be lifted up, he might be glorified, and others might see Christ living in us.